I'm out in the field here and um, this time of the year there's a tradition that I do. First of all, my fingers are very dirty. You can see I've been working here. Um, but there's a tradition I do that revolves around this little yellow flower here. It is the dandelion. And uh, I've been, we've been picking dandelions to make dandelion wine since, oh, I was, since I can remember, you know, probably since I was four or five, I'm sure I went out and helped the grandmas and aunts pick the dandelion flowers for dandelion wine, and it's still something I do now. And I remember, uh, we never went to church as a child, and uh, I remember one of the, one time we were in, out in the field, and it was me and my two sisters. Uh, I have an older sister and a younger sister, and then, uh, and I also have an older brother and a younger brother. <laughs> but anyway, it was the three girls and a couple of the aunts and grandma and my mother, and we were all out picking dandelion flowers. And um, my younger sister was always upset that we didn't get to go to church. Uh, you know, it always looked so fun. These kids got to dress up. You know, they got to put on costumes. <laughs> That's the way we always looked at it. And then they went to church. It must have been a really good time because so many people did it. <laughs> and uh, anyway, um, my 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 sister, uh, she she asked my aunt because we couldn't talk about this with my mother, and she asked my aunt, um, basically why don't we go to church? Don't we want to talk to God? And my aunt looks around and we were surrounded. And it was, you know, I'm at the beginning right now, at the beginning stage of the dandelions. So there was a heck of a lot more out here then. And we were surrounded by this sea of gold flowers. And um, my aunt made the comment, if you were God, would you rather sit in a stuffy old building, listen to somebody lecture? Or would you rather be out here with us ladies picking flowers? And uh, I always remember that statement because really, after I've been to church, you know, a few times, just to see what it was like, I always think, why would God ever go to church? I mean, how boring. And when it really hits me is the first time I come out and pick dandelions. This is where the God, the goddess, this is where they come. They come out here and watch the the wind dance the grass on the field. You can just see the grass moving in waves and sit out among the little yellow flowers. And they, and uh, I mean, really, if you were God, would you rather go to some stuffy old person's house that doesn't even know how to make dandelion wine? Or would you rather go over to somebody's house that makes a really darn good dandelion wine? What do we got here? Turkey vulture overhead, right there. Sign of death and rebirth, sign of change. And uh, so for me, picking dandelions for dandelion wine is my way of getting closer to the sacred. It's something that uh, um, was very important to me from that day forward to be out in nature because that's where good, honest spirits were. Gods and goddesses were out here with those of us who were experiencing them on the fundamental level of life, death, the wind the turkey vulture flying over. I don't know if I can catch. There the turkey vulture is. Turkey vulture flying over. There's actually a wild turkey, but he's all the way across the other side, so I can't. Oh, look, second turkey vulture. Really? A lot of change and rebirth coming on here. But anyway, I'm out here picking dandelion flowers. I've got, well, I probably have got plenty right now, but I'm picking them for making dandelion wine. And dandelions, for those people who don't know what a dandelion is, dandelion is actually more of a family name than a flower. There's more than one kind of dandelion. Some of them will have these heavy toothed leaves like this. Others of them will be more round. Some of them will have huge rosettes. Others of them won't have hardly any rosettes. And dandelions do come. They grow in a rosette, meaning all the leaves come off. These are all dandelion leaves, and they all come off from a central root. And then usually a few flowers come up off that root, too. And what dandelion is mostly known for, in fact, it's cursed for, which I don't understand why, is that little yellow pom-pom of a flower. Uh, people a long time ago got brainwashed into believing that grass was the only thing that should ever grow in a lawn. Uh, dandelion wine is one of the three folk wines of America. Three folk wines mean it being dandelions, the first one, then it goes to blackberry, and then to elderberry. Uh, 
those are the three main folk wines. Uh, they were often used in healing. Um, a lot of people would not make a tincture unless it was made from dandelion wine brandy. Um, brandy is, of course, the term brandy is a Welsh word that means burnt wine. And uh, you, your, your mash is actually wine as opposed to a corn um, or grain liquor. Uh, I've been making dandelion wine since before I was legally allowed to drink dandelion wine. Uh, it's such an easy wine to make. A lot of times you'll meet people that make it a lot harder than it has to be. It's one of these wines that's practically idiot proof. Uh, one of the things a lot of people will tell you is don't pick, don't have any green, green bracts. See my thumbnail, because I use my thumbnail as my knife, it's completely black. It'll clean up real fast. So. But they'll say don't leave any of the green bracts there because that'll make your wine bitter. Well, like I said, I've been making it. I'm for, I'm almost 47 now, so I'm sure I'm coming up on close to 40 years of either making it or working with people who were making it. Never clean the green bracts off. Now, like here's one that has the stem on it. I wouldn't leave the stem on it, but uh, other than that, I see, I just saw another one I think with a stem on it. Nope, maybe it was just more flowers. I kind of look them over before I put them in because I'm just grabbing them with my thumbnail as I go. But, uh, and nobody, you, you can't tell the difference. Um, somebody says, oh, really picky people can. No, I've never met a real picky person. And by the way, I have met really picky people. So I've never met anybody that could tell the difference. Now, can wine turn out bad? Yep, wine is a living, breathing thing. And if you piss off your wine, just like you piss anything else off, it's not going to taste great. So the thing is, it's just treat your wine with respect while you're making it, and it'll turn out fine. Dandelion wine is pretty idiot proof. You don't need fancy ingredients, you don't need fancy things. Um, we're going to start with a gallon. That's how I'm going to do it. It's going to be about a gallon of flowers, maybe a little more, and a gallon to a gallon of water. And uh, we're basically going to make a dandelion. I don't want the grass in there, though. We're going to make a dandelion flower tea, a very strong one. It's going to sit overnight. We're going to pour boiling a gallon of boiling water over um, our gallon of flowers. And we're going to let it set overnight. And in the morning, we're going to strain it out. And that's going to be the base for our wine. And then we'll need an acid, which is usually done with lemon or orange, or both, or lime. Whatever you have. Like I said, this is an idiot-proof wine. It is not a... Uh, um, it's not like, oh my gosh, if you don't make it this way, it won't turn out. Of course it'll turn out. See me and the bees are sharing. Honey be on the, honey be on the wine. Then we're going to add sugar. You can use honey. Um, we're going to put, for one gallon of wine, we're going to put three gallons, or three pounds of sugar. You can also use the same amount, three pounds of honey. Here's the big difference, and this is important, so listen close. <laughs> if you put honey in there, you can't call it wine. You have to call it mead. It suddenly becomes dandelion mead. It's a huge difference. Don't get, don't, don't mess that up or else the wine police will come and get you. It's not that. You can use honey. You can use uh, maple syrup. Um, you can, that would make a very unique tasting wine. In fact, it'll probably drown out a lot of the dandelion wine. But uh, I've made it with both honey and sugar because sometimes I have a lot of honey left over. Sometimes I got cheap sugar. Whatever, however it comes up, that's, uh, that's what I put in. And then the yeast. Now you can add other things to it. If you like a little bit of bite to it, you can put a little ginger or some even cinnamon or cloves into it. However you want to do it. But I usually make it pretty simple. I make it with dandelions, water, some kind of acid. I have lemon trees, but I also have a friend who has orange trees, and her orange trees are producing faster than my lemon trees are, so I'm going to mix. If you mix a half of lemon, half orange, that's going to be uh, a little acidy, a little tart, and uh, also a little sweet from the orange. If you like a little more bite to your wine, um, acid-wise, 
use four lemons. Use two limes and two lemons. Um, if you like it a little more sweet, use all oranges or use three oranges and one lemon. You know, this is this is not going to, if all you've got in the refrigerator is three lemons and some dried out old lime and a dried out old, old orange, stick the lemon or stick the dried out lime and orange in the microwave for a couple seconds or or uh, run it over some heat with tongs so you don't burn your fingers and get out the last of the juice and do it that way. We're we're not going to uh we're going to do things the way nature is, which is free and wild and we I've never had a problem with it uh making good dandelion wine. Dandelion wine's one of those like I said pretty idiot proof wines. So, I'm going to continue. I probably have got more than enough, but I'm going to fill this bucket up anyway. And I'm going to take you home and take you into the kitchen and show you how to pour boiling water over dandelion blossoms because that's the next step. This is such an easy recipe. When, uh, when you hear people making wine making out to be more difficult than it is, people were making wine in camel skins back before we had an alphabet. If you can write an alphabet, you can make wine. <laughs> so, uh, no big deal. And get out, uh, sit with God for a little while. Get away from those stuffy people who think they know everything. And go out and sit with the spirits and with the gods and goddesses. And uh, actually be with them for a little while instead of being with those stuffy people who know everything and make things a hell of a lot more complicated than they need to be. <laughs> all from the easy and very innocent little dandelion.